Hey everyone, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. Well, I've decided to take a little bit of a break from the universes of Star Trek, Star Wars, and Battlestar Galactica, and in this video I'm going to detail the building of this rocket ship from a classic sci-fi film called When Worlds Collide. When Worlds Collide is a 1951 science fiction movie produced by George Powell, who is most famous for films like War of the Worlds and The Time Machine. Now in this movie, the Earth is doomed to total destruction because it's due to collide with a rogue star called Belus. Orbiting this star is a planet they name Zyra, and that provides scientists with the one and only hope for humankind's survival. They then devise a plan to build a space ark which will hold animals as well as accommodate 40 humans. The ark is to be shot off into space and land on the planet providing mankind with a fresh start. So I can tell you I'm not a particularly big fan of this film, but as with most 1950s sci-fi films, you have to kind of watch it with a grain of salt because they're not the most scientifically accurate uh, movies, but they can certainly be entertaining. One thing I do always appreciate though is the fact that, you know, back then they did not have all the computers and CGI effects that are available to uh, movie makers today. And so as a model maker you can't help but appreciate all the detailing and efforts that went into making these models so they look realistic on screen. So that said, let me go ahead and give you a look at what comes with the kit. This is particularly not um, a complicated model. It comes with the two halves of the fuselage. Uh, you have the wing and tail sections and then some uh, of these pieces here that represent the rocket engines. And here you have the sled the rocket ship sits on. And this is the main engine section here. Now just to kind of see how it pieces together, I did dry uh, fit the uh, pieces for the railing here and what comes with the kit of course are the columns that hold up the railing and this base here that is molded to replicate a rock like surface. So this being a simple kit there aren't too many challenges here but the one issue that I do see will be the seam that runs from front to back. Obviously to blend the seam away we're going to have to uh, apply putty and sand that. Um, and when we do that, we're going to affect the panel lines that you see here. So I thought this might be a great opportunity to try my hand at scribing panel lines, and I purchased a special instrument for that, and I'll show you how that works shortly. The other thing I may do is light the base, um, maybe apply some lights or install some lights here, here, and here that will shine up at the rocket ship just to make it look a little more interesting. Um, I also plan to add um, some uh, foliage here. Um, I have some leftover stuff from when my son and I used to uh, mess around with model trains. Um, so I'm going to try to make the base look a little bit more realistic as well. I do not plan on lighting the kit itself because um, most of the film the model ship just sits on the railing as you're building it. So uh, I'm just going to leave that uh, aside and not do that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start by washing the kit and all the model pieces you see here and then we'll begin with the uh, two halves of the fuselage. Okay, so the first step is piecing together the two halves, and as we do that, we do have to include the engine piece here. So I went ahead and painted it with Chester's gun metal, and I've inserted it into the rear of the rocket. Now, when you put the two halves together, you'll find it's a pretty tight seam, actually, and uh, because of that, we don't have to really use a lot of putty. So what I'm going to try first is using this 10X 7R. It's basically a plastic um, adhesive that welds plastic together. And um, so hopefully that'll be enough and we don't have to really put a lot of putty on this. So the next step is just to kind of sand it and polish that seam away, hopefully. And then uh, we'll move on to working with the panel lines. Okay, so I'm in the process of addressing this seam here along the uh, fuselage. And it looked like the... Um, uh, 10X 7R was not enough, so I ended up using this um, Mr. Hobby Dissolved Putty, and um, I generally use this if the seam is just not being covered by the um, 10X 7R, but isn't uh, deep enough to warrant using a, um, a heavier putty. Okay, so you can see the seam has been addressed here, and um, essentially what I did was um, let the putty dry, and then I applied uh, various grits of sandpaper. Uh, started with a 400, went to a 600, and finally a 1200. I ended up using 1200 across the entire fuselage uh, just to kind of even it up a bit here. And I thought that would be helpful when finally painting and, or priming and painting the models so that you didn't have one surface look different than the rest. So, um, as you can see, it did somewhat affect the seams that you see here, or at least the panel lines that you see here. 
Uh, not too bad, not as bad as I thought, but uh, it's still going to give us an opportunity to use our scribing tool. So let me just show you how that would work. All right, so what we have here now is uh, something called a plastic scriber by Tamiya. It comes with a handle that looks similar to an X-Acto knife, and even it has a storage area here for extra blades. There's a locking mechanism here for safety purposes. It allows you to extend the blade and to retract it and then lock it into place. And as you can see, it has a tip here um, on the very end that we're going to use now to uh, glide along the surface of the model to create a panel line. So let's just go ahead and see how this works. Okay, so I have a, uh, an old piece from an X-Wing model. And um, say, for example, we wanted to create a panel line along here. So we can see we have panel lines already um, on the uh, surface here. This came with the model. But say we wanted to make an extra panel line here. And actually, this is uh, one I practiced with. You can see it created a nice line there. Let's go ahead and see how this tool works, though. Um, so the trick to scribing, though, is you want to be able to control where the blade is going, obviously. And so since we're going to create just a straight line, I'm going to use this styrene piece of plastic here as a guide. So uh, just bear with me here because it's a little bit difficult to do this at this angle, but essentially this is the way it works, is you just place the blade along the uh, area you're going to scribe and then just kind of draw it across the surface of the model. And I know this is crooked, but it's just uh, difficult to get the right positioning here. But uh, you get the idea, is that we now have created a line on the surface here, a panel line. And you can go as deep as you want to by going over and over that. Uh, but you can see that as the blade glides along the surface, it actually will uh, create a groove, uh, rather than just scratching it as if you maybe used an X-Acto knife to do that. Um, and so it creates like kind of a V groove, and uh, this way uh, you don't have to end up um, having to sand a lot of the residue uh, that can be created if you were just to scratch the surface. Okay, so what I've decided to do is just to kind of deepen uh, the panel line here where the sandpaper uh, sanded it down. And uh, so all I'm doing is I'm just using the original groove here on one side and just gently gliding over to the opposite side. Like so. And I'm not sure you can tell in the camera, but it's working really well here to recreate the panel line that was there. So let's go ahead and do this section. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and proceed on with the rest of it, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the way the tool worked. It reestablished the panel line um, that was sanded away when I smoothed over the seam. Uh, so that's how these panels look. I actually used it along this edge as well, just to deepen that up a little bit. And then looking at the bottom side, you can see it worked pretty well to reestablish that one. So again, I'm really happy with the way the tool works. Uh, this is going to be a great tool to have, especially in these situations where you are trying to address a seam and you sand over a panel line like this. It came uh, recommended by um, someone on one of my Google groups that I belong to. I posted a question about scribing, and um, this tool was uh, recommended, and I went ahead and got it because it was available at my local hobby store. And again, very happy with the way uh, the tool addresses these types of situations here. So, nice thing to add to your um, model tool collection. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move on now with painting. Okay, so the ship has been uh, assembled and also has been painted. Um, I decided to use Tamiya's Gloss Aluminum. And I really do like these Tamiya paints uh, because they dry fairly quickly and they have a nice, even finish. So the ship is just about completed. I just need to put the uh, needle onto the front section there. The other thing that's been completed is the rocket sled that the ship sits on. And it's just a matter of painting these uh, brackets red here. And the rest of it is painted with Tamiya's uh, light gun metal. And then I've proceeded with painting the railing gray. And these are the supports here, which were painted with the same Tamiya's haze gray as well. All right, now I'll continue to work on the base here, adding foliage, as I mentioned, as well as um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put some lights here that will shine up at the ship. 
So I will show you my progress with that shortly. Okay, so the first thing I did was I applied a little bit of brown pastels um, in the crevices here, um, and just leaving the tips of these original color. And what I'm going to do is continue to darken up some of these crevices here just to uh, give the base a little bit more of an interesting look. And then we're going to go ahead and start adding the foliage. So here we now have the completed base. Uh, the uh, track has been glued into position there. And as you can see, the foliage has been added. The white glue is still drying. I just glued that on with Elmer's glue. Also attached the rocket sled. I turned the base over just to show you the LEDs that I put into place here. Uh, the battery is held with this 9-volt uh, battery holder. Again, taking advantage of the fact that the base is higher in the center and it tapers down to the edge here. Uh, so there's definitely enough clearance for the battery. And I attached uh, just three LEDs here just to make the base a little bit more interesting. And I'll show you how that looks here when I reveal the final completed kit. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the uh, nameplate and attach it to the base and then I'll show you the completed kit. Okay, so here we now have the completed kit of the When Worlds Collide rocket ship. The model is produced by Pegasus Models. The ship itself measures 12 inches from front to back and the base and track add another couple inches of that so the total length is 14 inches. And along the base I also added some foliage uh, which is essentially used for train models and train sets. Uh, along with that I also added a turf blend and that was applied by just using some Elmer's glue mixed with water just applying it to the surface and sprinkling some of that all along here. And I've turned on the three LEDs that I have uh, installed into the base there and you can see they shine right up to the rocket ship. Again my hope there was to make the display a little bit more interesting. So just turning the uh, model around here to the back side this is where I hooked in the switch. It's just a simple toggle switch and uh, as I showed you previously it's just a 9 volt battery that is placed around here uh, on the underside there to power the uh, LEDs. Uh, for the uh, track here again I use Tamiya's um, haze gray and to paint the ship I use Tamiya's gloss aluminum. The um, little piece that the rocket ship sits on was painted with Tamiya's light gunmetal. So if you have in mind to build this kit, one other thing that you can do is buy a photo etch set. It runs almost about 50 bucks uh, from photo graphics and um, it allows you to build a ship that appears to be in mid-construction. So you can cut out the tail section, you cut out a section here, and you can see the inner uh, structure. And uh, there are also pieces that uh, you'll be able to display the insides of the engine. So this is a very straightforward, very simple build. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to contact me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Let me just go ahead and take a minute to rate this model kit. Okay, so my rating for this kit is going to be pretty easy. It's going to be a four all around. Ease of assembly, it was pretty simple to put together as you saw. Likeability, I actually like this kit a lot. And uh, accuracy, I think the kit was fairly accurate compared to what I can see on screen. And the kit comes in under $30, so it's fairly affordable. Okay, so that does it for now. If you have any questions, as I said, feel free to contact me. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.